Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. I know I just reviewed the Pen BBS 323 four days ago, but this one is special. It's made of aluminum. A great big shiny aluminum Christmas tree. This really brings Christmas close to a person. And so it's different from the other 323s I own. And it's special because I'm giving it away to a lucky subscriber. My channel just surpassed 1 million views and I thought it was a good excuse to celebrate. And I'm celebrating in two ways. First, I'm giving away this Pen BBS 323 Aluminum in Mocha with a medium nib to one of my subscribers because it's you inquiring minds that keep this channel going. And second, I'm celebrating by gifting myself a Grail pen. Those of you who have been following me will know that I gave myself a Grail pen last year on my 65th birthday. This Pelican M800. It has continued to be the very best writing pen in my collection. I thought that another grail type pen would be in order for reaching 1 million views. I spent about a month looking, searching, and thinking. I thought the ubiquitous Mont Blanc 149 would be a good choice. Even with discounts, they are hugely expensive for a plain black and gold pen. Then I thought, well, if I'm going to go classic black and gold, the best and more affordable choice would be a Pelican M1000 Streisman. I even entertained the notion of getting a Conway Stewart Winston, but 805 bucks is a hefty price tag for a brand that has changed hands and quality is unknown, at least to me. But it was the $105 shipping charge that was the deal breaker for me. I would walk to England before paying that kind of DHL charge. And then Doug Vickery's photo of his new pen on the Leonardo Officina Italiana Facebook page hit me right between the eyes. It's a Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero Grande in Jonathan Brooks custom acrylic called Earth Magic 2. It is a limited edition of 100 pieces commissioned by the Dutch Pen Show 2021. I've been watching all the cool acrylics that Leonardo has been putting on various models of pens with envy. The Fig Boot Leonardos are really beautiful. But this one really struck me and I hopped over to Applebaum website to see if it was available. I had to search for it specifically because it doesn't show up under the Leonardo brand anywhere. I found one in gold trim and ordered it with a broad nib so I might be able to get Jack Hernandez to grind it into an architect for me. While I wait for my grail pen to arrive, let's give away this Pen BBS 323 aluminum to one of you right now. So let's open it up and find out. And the first one out of the box is the 323. I've got a number of 323s. It's probably the most ergonomic fountain pen, uh, desk pen, that I've ever held. And I thought I had enough 323s to satisfy me. My friend Chris Rapsaic said to me, uh, you might know him better as Chris Rap 52 he said to me, have you tried one of the metal ones yet? And I said, yeah, not so much. He said, you should really try one of these. Well, you always do what Chris tells you to do. So this one, I waited and waited until I got one that was in a color that I liked. It finally came up. It's the Mocha color. Typical pen BBS box. The flip magnetic top. Don't open these more than 90 degrees, folks, or you'll break them. And the cool thing with the metal pens is they give you an extra nib, which is a rollerball. And so it's rollerball convertible. Oh yes, I'm glad I waited for the Mocha. Isn't that nice? I'll compare it with my acrylic versions. Uh, this one came with a medium nib. I really didn't have a choice. I don't like the medium nib so much. So very, very nice pen. I'm going to ink this up and give it a try. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. And I'm going to show the differences between the aluminum 323 and the acrylic 323. 
And after the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. And I'll let you know how you can win this pen in the giveaway. Overall, the pen is almost exactly the same size and shape as the acrylic version. Uh, we shall see the slight differences. And being metal, it is a full 13 grams heavier at just over 30 grams. This particular finish is called Mocha. The acrylic 323s have been made in a huge variety of acrylics, but from what I can tell, the aluminum alloy version has only been made in three colors, silver, lilac, and this Mocha. I had this pen in mind for a long time, but I had to wait a number of months before I saw the Mocha color become available on Etsy. The finish is anodized aluminum, and it is cool to the touch and very, very silky smooth. It is almost too smooth as it becomes slippery when you have dry hands, which is all the time in a desert climate like here in Calgary. Water, water, water. Oil, oil, room service. Of course there is no clip, and we have the same conical finials as the acrylic model. The cap unscrews, with one full rotation as opposed to the one and a half rotations of the acrylic model to reveal a section uh, that is quite different than the acrylic model as the cap threads are at the top rather than the bottom of the section like on the acrylic. The bottom of the section has the imprint Pen BBS and 323 in big block letters and a couple of leafy ornaments. The section is the same type of concave shape but slightly shorter than the section on the acrylic. There is a slight step down from the barrel, which has an edge that is noticeable. It isn't exactly sharp, but nowhere near as smooth as the transition on the acrylic version. And here is the number six size Pen BBS round medium steel nib and black plastic feed. The nib and feed are in the standard Pen BBS nib collar assembly and can be swapped with any other number six size pen bbs nib unit it has none of the traditional pen bbs filigree border work and has an ornate letter m for medium pen bbs 2005 and shanghai china the section unscrews to reveal the included pen bbs cartridge converter and you see there's a silicone o-ring at the top of the section's nozzle this doesn't mean that you can eyedropper the aluminum 323. It is all still metal and ink will react to it. I think the inclusion of the O-ring here is to keep the barrel from unscrewing in your hand as you write. The pen will also accept Lamy long and Parker short cartridges. The inside of the cap shows the cap threads deep inside which seals the nib. The cap actually goes on the barrel, which doesn't happen with the acrylic model. And that's because of those deep cap threads. It isn't designed to post as the cap just sits there and falls off if you move the pen. Unposted, the pen feels wonderful in the hand. That barrel shape is made to contour in your palm. I bought this pen from the official Pen BBS shop on Etsy for $20 US plus $6 shipping. They are now completely out of stock and rarely come back into inventory. As I write this, there is a one in silver available on eBay at the moment. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Pen BBS 323 aluminum in Mocha with a Pen BBS 380, a Lamy Studio Palladium, a Moonman T1, and a Faber Castell Loom. I thought I'd gather up all the aluminum finished pens that I have. So let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. Of course, the 323 does not post. The 380 has a rollerball nib on it right now, but that's an extra that you get with the fountain pen. You can use it as a fountain pen or as a rollerball. I've got it as a rollerball right now. And the cap posting on the end of the T1 is dangerous because it does actually turn that piston. And now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. 
this is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the Pen BBS. Three, two, three, aluminum. Mocha. And it has a medium steel nib. Let's check the wetness. This pen is decently wet. Compared with the many fine pen BBS nibs I've received, this medium round is very wet right out of the box. And it's very, very smooth. With just a hint of feedback. Almost like glass. And the ink today is actually a Christmas present from one of my kids. A Canadian made ink from Toronto. Ferris Wheel Press. Jelly bean blue. Here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. As to line variation, well, you're not going to get very much. This is a very stiff Chinese steel nib. This line it's creating here is 0 0.6 millimeters, which makes it a Western medium or a Japanese medium to broad. And for our quote, And for some reverse writing, there's a lot more drag on the page. Not exactly scratchy, but that feed is actually keeping up. Much drier, of course. And some quick writing. Absolutely no issues with the feed at all. So, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? I think I'm going to address what I like and don't like about the differences between this aluminum alloy version and the acrylic version. All of my likes and dislikes about the 323 model still stand. I don't decry the absence of a clip because it's not designed for a clip, and I deal with the rolling issue with costume jewelry. It's an easy fix. The shape, section, and balance on the 323 are perfect. The aluminum alloy introduces a few dislikes, however. The aluminum alloy is cold to the touch, although it does warm up quickly. It's also very slippery, and almost twice the weight of the acrylic version, which changes things quite a bit. It isn't exactly heavy, but being slippery, in addition to having gripping issues, make it a little bit less comfortable for long writing sessions, which in my mind is actually the beauty of the 323 model. The slight step from the barrel to the section is noticeably sharper than the smooth threads of the acrylic model. And it should be noted that the acrylic version, in addition to having a terrific selection of finishes, can be used as an eyedropper filler where this aluminum version cannot. Plus, there are only three colors of this, and it's difficult to get. I'm surprised that I do, in fact, like this medium nib very much. It is wet and smooth. And now for how you can win this pen. 
To win the pen, simply be a subscriber to this channel and post a comment below. You can post about anything that will get by the channel censor, which is me. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. But I will give you a topic to discuss amongst yourselves. I like acrylic better than metal as a material for fountain pens. Discuss. Talk amongst yourselves! <laughs> Leave your comment here within 72 hours of the posting of this video. So that is by this coming Saturday, January 8th at 8 a.m. Pacific Time. At that time, I will select a comment at random and announce it on my community page in a pinned comment to this video and in a reply to the winner. If you are the winner, you have 48 hours to contact me by email at inquiringminds at gmail.com with your name and address so I can mail you your prize. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And don't forget that you can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I will answer your comments in the comment section, and you get cool emojis and badges too. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.